find the quadratic approximation to the function f of x equals the square root of 3 plus x squared. And we're going to do this using the Taylor series that's centered at 1. The key thing is to note that we're not centered at 0. We're centered at 1. And because of that, we're not talking about a Maclaurin series. We can't use the table of series even if this function did look like one of those functions, it's centered at 1 and not at 0. And when they say quadratic approximation, we have to understand that means that we go up to order 2. So there's going to be a polynomial that's a parabola when graphed that will have perhaps a constant term, a linear term, and a squared term. Our job is to find the coefficients. Well, how do we find the coefficients? It comes from taking the function, according to Taylor's polynomial, these coefficients are the function and its derivatives evaluated at A, and then divided by N factorial. So let's start off with the function itself. The square root of 3 plus X squared. We want to be able to take the derivative of this, so let's treat it as 3 plus X squared to the half. So when it's time to take the derivative, we can bring the half down, take 3 plus x squared to the negative 1 half, and then multiply by 2x, the chain rule, which is the derivative of the inside. Okay, simplifying this, the 2's cancel, and we have x over the square root of 3 plus x squared. We don't want to leave it in the same form because we'd have to do a product rule and it would get kind of complicated, so it's better to do a quotient rule in this case. Where we start off, in order to take the second derivative, we square the denominator. Well, it's a square root. Square, square root. Well, just cancel out. And then we bring the denominator up to the numerator and we multiply by the derivative of the numerator. Well, x's derivative is just 1. So now, then we put a minus sign, we leave the numerator alone, and take the derivative of the denominator. But remember now, the denominator is the same as our original function, and we took its derivative and got x over the root of 3 plus, 4, uh, 3 plus x squared. So we'll get the same thing. No need to do it again. And so this is our second derivative. Well then what are we supposed to do with these terms, with these functions? We could simplify it, but we're supposed to evaluate these at A. Remember now, A is 1. Let's just plug a 1 in. Square the 1, we get a 1. Add the 3, we get a 4. Square root of 4 is 2. For the first derivative, replace the x's with 1's, and we get a half. Now for the second derivative, Replacing with 1's is a little bit more involved. We put a 1 in here, we get a 2. We put a 1 in here, and we get a half again. In the denominator, with the square and the square root canceling out, we put a 1 in there, we get a 4. Well, 2 minus a half is just 3 halves. If we take 3 halves and divide it by 4, we get 3 eighths. This isn't the end of the story, though. These are just the numerators. We divide by n factorial, each individual term. Well, 0 factorial is just 1, so we get a 2. 1 factorial is just 1, so we get a half. 2 factorial is 2, so 3 eighths divided by 2 is 3 sixteenths. These are our coefficients. We just went out and found a1, uh, a0, a1, and a2. But they're not the coefficient on x. We are centered at 1. So these guys are the coefficients on powers of x minus 1. So our quadratic approximation to this function, using the Taylor series centered at 1, is t2 that's equal to 2 minus 1 half times the quantity of x minus 1 plus 3 sixteenths. 
times the quantity of x minus 1 squared. And that's our final answer.